Friday, February 5th, 2021, and I am coming to you from Universal Orlando Resort. Today we're here for something very special. I am bringing you along for a special pass holder preview of the brand new 2021 Mardi Gras Tribute Store a day before it opens to the public. If you didn't know, Universal's creative team creates a tribute store each year for Halloween Horror Nights and for Mardi Gras. This past year, for the first time ever, they did a Christmas holiday store, which was amazing. And these tribute stores are more than just a gift shop with specialty merch for the event. They are a whole themed, immersive experience. <laughs> What's really cool too about this preview is that hopefully it means that the tribute store will be less crowded than it will be tomorrow. So we'll be able to take a more detailed look and I'll be able to show you all the brand new Mardi Gras merch, the food and drinks that are in there, and of course the theming. Mardi Gras starts tomorrow and runs through March 28th and they've already got the medallion hanging up there in the archway. Seeing these hanging on the lamp posts and that little bit of Mardi Gras colored tinsel has got me so pumped. Look, they go all the way down. Oh my goodness, Mardi Gras is everywhere. The merch is out. I'm sure a lot of this is gonna be inside the tribute store, but we can already see some of it. I love this. I love that inside of the hoodie is this bright, vibrant neon green. What else do we have? Masks, beautiful, so fun. Cute tank top, brand new lanyards too. Everything is strewn with beads and colors. I love bright colors if you don't know this, so I'm really thrilled about this. Shot glasses, mug or like steins, I guess. This is what I've been looking for. I saw these online, the Party Like a Pirate. They have t-shirts and a hoodie. Party Like a Pirate is a theme. Oh my gosh, we've hit the mother load. Yep. <laughs> this is so cool, I love it. In the stage area, I'm seeing a lot of the booths already set up. They're not open yet, they open tomorrow, but we can see the menus. They've got Mufalata or Mufaletta, I don't know, but I had it in New Orleans once and it was amazing. The whole lawn area in front of the stage is all set up. There are these like pillars here. I don't know if something's gonna go on them, but they're kind of spread out all throughout. This is something I am very, very excited about. It looks like a Bloody Mary bar. Oh my golly. That is definitely gonna be one of my first stops tomorrow. The stage is all decked out too. Last time I was here, I showed you some of the setup for Mardi Gras, like the white tents. Now they've got more color, more trim, and they've installed these bright yellow tables for standing and eating. And they've got these jester hats and beautiful glowing tinsel all over the park. This area of the park, by the way, is the smoking section. I often walk through it by accident just because it's so pretty. So. Be careful if you walk through this area. If you do have someone in your party who needs a smoke break, this is where they would go. But if you have people who do not like breathing smoke like me, stay clear of this area. It's a little pro tip for you. All right, I've made my way from the front of the park to the back here. I'm looking at the New York Public Library, which I'll show you in just a moment, and the facade of the tribute store. It looks so cool, let me show it to you. So right now they've got these barricades up that say UOAP, Universal Orlando Annual Pass Holders, special event tribute store preview. You had to sign up for this in advance, which I did, and you got a time slot, which I did. I love that Universal does so many special things like this for pass holders. I've been to so many pass holder previews and special events, and I've been grateful for every single one of them. Just from all the details outside, I can already tell it's gonna be spectacular inside. And they usually have like little Easter eggs and hidden things. Each room throughout the tribute store has a different story and a different plaque. And as you go in, this first plaque says, Royal Street Jazz Preservation Hall. Welcome to the Royal Street Jazz Preservation Hall proudly preserving the music that has been the heartbeat of New Orleans for over a century. I've been admiring the outside, but it is time to go inside. My preview time has begun. Thank you so much. Hello. Welcome to the jazz hall. Thank you. We've got a coat check right in the front. I think I'll hold on to my coat for this time, but maybe we'll check it next time. There's a bell to ring and a hallway full of art. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> of course, we've got a gorgeous piano, a wall of masks. You've got pirate hats, because it looks like pirates are a theme this year. Party like a pirate. They've got when the saints go marching in up here on the sheet music in front of the piano. 
This piano looks mighty familiar. I feel like we've seen this in the Tribute Store before. Bolden Hall, inspired by jazz conservatories scattered throughout the French Quarter, majestic Bolden Hall pays tribute to the countless musicians and artists who have shaped New Orleans and given it the clearest musical voice in America. The Tribute Store this year, of course, is taking inspiration from the Preservation Hall in New Orleans, which is an amazing institution of jazz music. I've been there, it's awesome. And I love how clever this is. They've got a jazz set up on the stage and the bass drum here says, the tributes for the tribute store. That's so cool. As I suspected, they've got a lot of the merchandise that you can see outside in the booth that we looked at before we came in, but they also have a lot more. I was ready to buy a new sweater because it was so cold this week, but now it's like hot, so I don't know. You can get personalized merch. This seems to be a new thing going on in the tribute stores and another piano. That's actually really cool. You can get a personalized vinyl record, a sign. I like that, that's really neat. Maybe I'll get one that says super enthused. What do you guys think? Full on like gowns and outfits, skirts, a lot more. What candles, vintage parlor candle. I might have to get one of those. You know I love my candles. And I love how the merchandise is kind of all mixed in with the theming, with trumpets and brass instruments and masks, potted flowers everywhere. The walls are lined with famous jazz artists. We've got bejeweled hats in Mardi Gras colors, posters. They've always got the ducks, so we've got our Mardi Gras ducks. A lot of cool stuff. Definitely gonna get some shirts and I'm gonna get Sam a shirt too. The lanyards, oh they've got two lanyards in here. See, outside I only saw this one and there's another like more subdued one. And one thing that I saw online too that I really, really liked were these new keychains and pins with the Mardi Gras beads hanging from them. All right, it's time to do some shopping. There's a special annual pass holder t-shirt so definitely gonna want that one. Uh-oh. Only one medium left. I like medium because I like roomy shirts. I like space in my shirts, you know? I don't like them to be tight. And one for Sam. All right, making our way into the next room. Last year this room had the kind of like voodoo king in it. It was so cool. And this year, wow. It's like a New Orleans cemetery. New Orleans is famous for their beautiful cemeteries. You can take tours of them, which I have done many times. There are beads hanging in the trees, just like in the Garden District. Amazing masks, really detailed, and ornaments. It's kind of like Day of the Dead stuff mixed in here. They've got this beautiful crypt. This room also has a bit of a Savannah, Georgia feel. It's also like a bayou, swampy town with beautiful cemeteries and a lot of history. There's a peacock up there. They've got the Party Like a Pirate shirts and hoodies in here too. All sorts of light up fun things. Just like at past tribute stores, they've got these Moldo Rama machines. They've been themed to every store and I've gotten one from every single one. And for Mardi Gras, they've got kind of like a shiny brown, like a copper looking skull. So I'll probably be getting that too. I feel like these angels have made their way into past tribute stores and themed areas for various holidays here at Universal Orlando. And they bless whatever area they are in with beauty and wonderful theming. The music is so rich. This is great, I love it. And we're only in the second room, there's still more to go. And it smells really good in here too. It smells like Halloween Horror Nights, really. We've got like a lot of cute little toys and things that are unique to the tribute store. A really cool team member just pointed out to me that there is a tribute to Earl the Squirrel here in the graveyard. Earl the Squirrel will continue to return to us each year for everything. And I notice over here a little bit of ship stuff. Let's see if we can find more pirate ship related theming. Is it called a helm? Help me out people. I think it's called a helm. If you want to adorn yourself with beads, get in the spirit of things, you can get a ton of really, really cool, unique ones here. You want to be Mardi Gras queen? 
or king. Just soaking in these details a little bit longer. I can't wait to come back in this store like a lot, a lot of times. Many, many times. There's a plaque here right as you're about to exit this room and I won't try to pronounce it, but I believe it's, it's a garden of those who were lost at sea because a uh, mare is the sea, per, perdus, like lost, jardin, garden, like marines. So I think it's like the garden of people lost at sea, like mariners lost at sea. Plus there's a boat there, so that kind of gives it away too. And the sign says, take a quiet moment to salute those who came before. New Orleans history was written in bayous, bottle clubs, and battlefields by bandoliers and buccaneers, chefs and charlatans, parade marshals and privateers. From the brick streets of the quarter to the brackish waters of the Barataria Bay, New Orleans has been the birthplace and final resting grounds of some of the most colorful people in history. Their legends echo here forever and will never fully be silenced. Next room, here we go. So ready for this. There are maps lining the hallway. So if you remember, these hallways are always lined with theming. And it looks like we're going with, we're going into some pirate waters. I feel like we might be going to troubled waters here. Is that what's happening? It looks like this pirate arrow. Oh my goodness. So I keep saying ship like wheel, but I believe it's a helm. Either way, wow. If I can show you how large this thing is, like just the scale of it compared to a human, it's huge. And it looks like we've got some of the crates of cargo from perhaps a ship. This room looks like the cargo, like the ship's cargo room. We've got like a storage of all of the things that are either about to go onto the ship or have come off of the ship. There are maps and oh, we found the treasure. The treasure has been found along with some notes. He is of a, oh, that's very hard to read. It's very dark but it's very beautiful. Each room has one of these plaques and this one says Lafitte Bros Imports. Ah, okay, so that makes sense with all of the cargo and goods that we see in here. Jean Lafitte, along with his blacksmith brother, Pierre, managed to provide the merchants of New Orleans with rare and beautiful imported goods, despite this being a federal crime in 1807. Many things Jean pirated from cargo ships in the Gulf would find their way to a Mississippi waterfront warehouse such as this. Before Pierre delivered them into the city under cover of night, their piracy charges were pardoned later after they led their crew in to defend the U.S. in the Battle of New Orleans. And the Lafitte brothers remain city heroes to this day. These portraits look like they're worth a pretty penny. Pirated portraits, worth a pretty penny. How do you like that? You may have heard of Magic Candle Company. I've actually ordered from them before in the past. And it looks like some of their candles are being featured here. And they're themed to the room. This is Pirate Banana Rum. It smells so good. And then this one is called Scallywag. And it also smells really good. I was able to sniff them and they smell so good. All of these maps and details, I wish I could pour through every single thing, but we'll definitely have multiple walkthroughs here at the Tribute Store. When this room gets quiet, you can hear seagulls and creaking ships. They've also got another of these wax machines here with an authentic pirate ship. I actually really like this one better than the skull. I think this is the one we'll get. Let's do it. Is it working? Yeah, let's do it. Did it work? Card approved. Okay. Oh, here we go. You can smell like the wax when it's making it and the whole thing is shaking. Oh, cool. Oh, what? No, 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 no. What? No. Come on. Oh my gosh. No. Okay, so we know it's gonna be hot for a second. 
Just let it cool. That's hot, hot wax or whatever the material is. And there we go, and it says Universal Studios on it. It's beautiful! This is really cute. I've got quite a few of these. All right, it's time to make our way into the final room, and this is the room where the food is going to be, which I am so, so excited for. We have this giant shipwrecked ship. You can hear the sounds of creaking wood. This is gorgeous. And just like each room, this has a piece of parchment instead of a plaque, but it's still got a little story. Each room has its own story. And this says, Barataria Bayou, south of New Orleans, where the Mississippi bayous meet the Gulf of Mexico. Lafitte and his crew of smugglers loaded pirated goods from ships to smaller boats to be sent up the moonlit river into the city. This village, resting in the mossy shadows of a fallen pirate empire, celebrates Cajun food and music and the many cultures that had to collide to create New Orleans. Or New Orleans, however you say it. Right now, this is a pass holder preview, so the crowds are lower than they will be when this is open to the public. I recommend trying to come out on a weekday so that you can hear the soundscape that's in here. So if you can come in here when it's less crowded and just sit in silence for a moment, you'll be able to hear the creaking and the ship noises and the water. I even hear music. Is that like a pirate shanty, a sea shanty? Maybe. We're gonna come back and pay multiple visits, like I said, so we're gonna be able to really soak in those details. There are different booths in here with different food items, sweet treasures, looks like it has some king cake, shipwrecked pirate skulls, and we've got the glowing skulls here. Although it looks like the mystery gumbo booth says, back soon, I guess they're not here. <laughs> I do see some interesting literature back there, some interesting books. You see anything interesting? This is the Bayou Bites booth, and this looks right up my alley. It looks delicious. So Sweet Treasures has king cake, praline cookie, salted caramel, praline sandwich, bananas foster, cheesecake pop, Mardi Gras vanilla cake with cinnamon swirl, Mardi Gras macaroon donut, moon pie, masquerade cookie, vegan brownie skull, and chocolate covered bourbon pop. A lot. These all look so beautiful, it's tough to decide. The king cake is really looking gorgeous, but the cinnamon look cake, oh my gosh. It's all really, really pretty. I'll come back to try everything. I think, uh, I think I'll do a king cake, please. I've heard good things about the Banana Foster's Cheesecake Pop. The cake, I bet you that cake is great. These macaron donuts are so beautiful. Yeah, this all looks incredible. I'm gonna skip the pirate skulls for now. We'll come back for that, and I'm gonna get something from Bayou Bites. My hands were too full to show you the checkout area, but we're gonna come back a lot. We will be back a lot to this tribute store, but I got a ton of goodies. This is the exit room. Oh my goodness. I'm feeling this vibe so hard. Let's take these goodies outside and find a place to eat them. The theming continues all the way as you exit the store. That was awesome. Oh my goodness. Oh look, tables. Oh, can we find a table? Can we? Can we? No, but we can find a stoop right here. We're sitting here on the steps of the New York Public Library and I'm gonna show you what I got to eat, starting with from Bayou Bites, I got that Andouille Sausage Puff Pastry with Creole Mustard, looks like Dijon. And then I also got the vegetarian option, Artichoke Vegetarian Hand Pie, which is like a um, an empanada type of thing. And then of course I had to get the King Cake. This must be tried. It looks really pretty and it's got a giant cookie on top. I'm glad that they added seating to this area and it's always like nice to sit on, this, on the steps here too. Mm. The sausage is legit. That would actually be really good with a frosty beer, but they are not selling alcoholic beverages inside the tribute store as they did last time. They had some eggnog and something else in there. Maybe it was just eggnog, but it's just food and treats for this store, but there will be drinks all around the park at all of the booze that I showed you, but that again starts tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll, we'll be testing those out. Mardi Gras also does provide you the opportunity to purchase a sampling lanyard where you can pay one set price, you get a certain amount of punches, and you generally save money rather than purchasing the items individually. However, the items in the tribute store, I am told, don't count for 
the lanyard. So these are a separately priced item. I love seeing Rip Ride Rocket go by and hearing everyone scream. Also, it's a gorgeous day, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Anywho, the sausage is good. It is so, so, so good. Let's try the um, artichoke one. This is really good. So it's vegetarian, but it's obviously not vegan because it does have cheese in it, but it's very, very delicious. Really good. Two wins so far. Just eating on the stoop on a beautiful day. It feels so good. And look at how much sausage is in there. That's like, that's a lot of sausage. And the puff pastry is delish. That is a winner. I'm still working on my food and I was gonna wait, but I can't wait. I gotta try the king cake. I've gotta try it. Let's get a nice bite of this. So it's the Mardi Gras colors. They are purple, green, and gold. Purple represents justice. Green represents faith and gold represents power. The color green is said to represent faith. Let's start with faith, because I've got faith that this is gonna be delicious. Oh, it looks nice and flaky and good. All right, let's try it. Well, if purple stands for justice, let's try some justice. Let's try a little slice of justice. Oh my gosh, so good. A lot of places outside of New Orleans have tried to make king cake, and honestly, it's dry and it's not cinnamony, it's not creamy. This is so, so, it tastes very close to the king cake I've had from New Orleans. It's rich, but not too rich. It's really, really good. That is a winner. I am so happy. Not all of the like New orleans -y type of treats I've tried at these types of things are that good. Now, if I was here with friends, one of us would roll down the spot with the food and one of us would go grab some cold beers because that is the only thing that would take this over the top. But since I'm here by myself, I can't do both, but tomorrow we'll try more of the Mardi Gras drinks. Because the sausage gets a little spicy as you get in there. I know it looks weird that I'm eating on a stoop here, but you know, you really can't beat the view. And I just noticed all of those that look like tables that you can stand at, which would probably be a lot better than what I'm doing right now. So good to know for next time. There are some tables. I think those are tables. We'll scope that out in a moment. I need another gold power bite. I need more power. I'm gonna have another bite of green because we could all use a little bit of faith. See you later. All done trying the treats and the walkthrough, the preview of the tribute store. I am so impressed as always. And I just look forward to many visits. I also sometimes notice that things may change with time. So if you return from one week to the next, you may notice things shifting and changing, new things being added, new colors to the wax, figures, like all sorts of different fun things. So it's four o'clock. We have one hour until the park closes today. The park is still closing at 5 p.m. on weekdays, which is, ah, I wish it was open longer, but it will be open longer on weekends at least. So tomorrow for the big opening day of Mardi Gras, they will be open later. All right, let's head back into the park see what we can do with the last hour of the day. That's the spot I was at, by the way, that stoop right up there, and there are tables in front of it as well. And indeed, these are tables, stand-up tables. These are great. I totally would have taken this spot if I knew it existed, but now I know, so next time. Scattered all over the park will be booths like this, featuring food from different countries. This is the Trinidad and Tobago booth. I remember Florian, it was really good. I've been asking around to find out how tomorrow is going to work with the Mardi Gras floats because normally there is a large Mardi Gras parade and it is the highlight of the day during Mardi Gras here at Universal. However, obviously there's not gonna be a parade this year but they did say the floats would still be out. So what I am gathering is that the floats will be scattered all around the park. For one thing, it keeps people from congregating all in one area, so it helps with social distancing. And for another, it just adds new points of interest all over the park. I think it's really smart and really cool, and what I've heard is that each float will have its own little sort of party atmosphere with music, dancing, and various fun activities, which I am beyond excited about. Mardi Gras sounds like it's gonna be amazing. And I will be here tomorrow, as I've said like 20 times. <laughs> but hey, when you're excited about something, you're excited about something, you know? Some of the food booths this year look like shipping containers, like some of the ones we've seen, and some are tents like this one. And they've got another menu up here. This is the Brazil menu. Ah, and some are even food trucks, like this one. This has the Colombia menu here up. They're gonna have some arepas. Yummy, yummy. 
They did have arepas out recently in a food truck as well. So it looks like that's gonna be back for Mardi Gras. International flavors of carnival. Looks like Hashtag is up on his balcony up there. We're kind of far from him, but can you see him right there? He's waving and dancing. Oh, there he goes, bye. When the park is this close to closing, a lot of the establishments close, like food and rides start to shut down. So I think to wrap things up, let's take one more look in the Universal store to see what else is in there. Right in the front of the park, the Universal Studios store. This is kind of like the main gift shop for the park. Whenever there are seasonal events, holidays, special events, new merch lines, anything going on, the Universal Studios store is going to have them. I'm really fond of this pin with the beads hanging off of it and the keychain, but I do feel like a pin is more something I could display on my pin board and it's really pretty. There's a lot and these beads are so impressive. I got a lot of this already in the Tribute store, but you can also get it here. Oh, okay, so they do have the other lanyard here too. They have both. Cool, and socks. Oh, and I just noticed the centerpiece store display. That is beautiful. They have really been knocking it out of the park with the centerpiece like displays in this store. I actually still have a huge collection of beads from last year's Mardi Gras that I hope that I remember to wear tomorrow because I want to walk in here dripping with beads and ready to party like a pirate. Right, my dude? Yeah! I really like the green and purple mannequins and I love the skeleton crew all hanging all over this display. We've got main skeleton here looking like they're gonna throw some beads. We've got hanging on the lamppost skeleton here. Hanging on for dear life onto that lamppost. We've got hanging on to the box skeleton. They look like they are both partying. Like pirates? Maybe. And then we've got kind of sitting on the box, hanging out with the lamppost skeleton here. It's got a flower in its mouth, so it looks like it's gonna throw a rose at you maybe. Or maybe someone threw a rose at this one. Dunno. Got beads hanging everywhere. And then we've got another lamppost skeleton, but this one looks like it's hanging on a little better, a little bit cooler, a little classier. The cool masks on. I like the idea of using skeletons for mannequins. <laughs> I'm a fan. Very cool display. Well, the clock is about to strike 5 p.m. and I think that is gonna wrap today up. I didn't get a lot done after the Tribute Store, but I sure spent a long time in the Tribute Store and every moment was so worth it. What's really cool about having done this today is that now tomorrow, I'll come back and spend a full day focused on like the parade floats, the food, the entertainment, and the other details of Mardi Gras. We will go through the Tribute Store again, but now we've already gotten a big detailed tour so we can spend more time on the other aspects tomorrow. And Mardi Gras will be going on through February and March. So I'll be back a few times, I'm sure, to show you as like menus change, new things come up and continue checking out more of what's going on. Because I have a feeling we won't be able to do it all in one day. So I would say with today, our super detailed walkthrough of the brand new 2021 Mardi Gras Tribute Store and getting to try a lot of the food that's in there, two food items, one dessert, all of them being home runs, hit it out of the park. None of them were just okay. They were all like, great. That's a pretty good day in my books and that's gonna be a wrap on today. As I have said several times, I'll be back tomorrow. So make sure you stay tuned because it is gonna be such an epic day. Also, if you're not following me on Instagram, over there, sometimes I post previews of things to come. I post behind the scenes while things are happening and little extra stuff that doesn't go into the vlog. So if you wanna follow me on Instagram, that'd be cool. Also, I never mentioned this, but I do have a TikTok. I hardly ever use it, but you never know. One day I might start using it more. So if you have TikTok and that's something you like, please follow me over there, super enthused, so that, you know, it's not so lonely over there. And maybe the more people that go over there, Maybe I'll start doing stuff. I don't know what, but something. But I actually really love doing these long form detailed videos. My goal was always to have my own little travel show. I was inspired by people like Samantha Brown, Rick Steves, Anthony Bourdain, people with long form travel shows who taught like edutainment. So that's really, I mean, I'm sure if you, if you watch a lot of my videos, you'll pick that up. I have done a lot of history videos and historic tours and events, 
even when I do the theme parks, I always mix in like little history bits, little fun facts, things like that, because I just can't help it. Like, my background is in education, it's what I love, so I always try to mix those things in, a little bit of edutainment, and I hope that you all enjoy that too, and I do feel that comes off better and just more enjoyable for me to do in longer form content. One day I would like to do really long travel documentaries, so one day that'll happen, but that's like a long-term goal. Got a lot of goals, people. I actually like both watching and making longer form videos. I prefer a video that's like over 20 minutes so that I can click it and watch it and have it on for a while and not have to worry about like clicking something else on in like 10 minutes. That's just what I like. I know not everybody does. Some people like really short videos, some people like really long. Everybody's different and that's the beauty of the world. And I'll try to keep bringing a variety. I'll do some that are shorter, some that are longer, but if you can't tell, I just really love making longer videos. I find it more of a creative challenge for me. I find it more fun. I find it more rewarding. And as a viewer of other people's videos, I like watching longer videos too. That's just me. Why am I babbling about this? Oh yeah, cause Instagram and TikTok, I also have those too, so I add other things over there. So if you wanna follow me more places and see more variety of stuff, you can do that. Okay, that's it, gonna wrap up. I'm sending you all a ton of love. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow for a big video. And until then, as always, stay enthused, bye.